The first total is a reachable par 5, and the Tangent AI Caddy is recommending the driver down the right-hand side. I'll agree with it. The left-hand side is full of trees that if you get behind, you're stuck. The right-hand side, you've got to cover a lake at 250, but I should be able to handle that with the driver no problem. You do have trees on the right-hand side, but they're sparse, a little easier to get around, and not a significant challenge. So from history, we can aim at the right-hand side and grip it and rip it which I do, and a nice little draw puts me in position A. For my second shot, I have 200 yards from the middle of the fairway to a back right pin. The AI oh, yeah. caddy suggesting five iron. Five iron clears most of the trouble. It does bring this front right bunker into play, but hitting any more than that would bring long into play, which is no good at all. Basically, I just want to hug the right to this multi-tiered green and try to miss the bunkers. If I miss left, that's not too bad of an up and down. Luckily, I hit this well, missed the bunker, and I'll be putting for eagle. On an eagle putt, I'm not doing anything different. I'm not forcing myself to get there. I'm not trying to hit this too hard or be too aggressive. I do read this poorly on these very grainy greens, but I get the speed right. So even with a terrible read, I've only got two feet for an easy birdie. Didn't force anything, and just like that, I'm one under on the first hole. If you want to play good golf, you really got to take care of the par fives with smart golf. I did that here. The second hole is a short par four, but it's broken up by a big lake, which means you're laying up off the tee. The left hand side is dead. If you hit it in those trees, you're blocked out and pitching out sideways. The right hand trees aren't near as bad. They're much more sparse. And if you hit it over there, a lot of times you'll still have a shot, or at least it's an easier pitch out. I went ahead and hit 5 wood instead of 5 iron because I wanted to get closer to the lake for an easier second shot. Make sure I got past the trees and I did just that. Leaving just a short wedge in. I got a back left tucked pin and missing this left would be dead and those trees are really difficult up and down. So I'm actually aiming at the middle of the green. You'll see my feet lined up well to the right of this pin with a little bit of extra club to make sure that I get there. Turns out that I blocked this one, and so I end up on the rightmost portion of the green. But of the two misses, I would much rather have a long putt than a chip from the trees. I have almost 70 feet for birdie, and in this case, you're really just trying to lag. A good number to remember is 10% of the starting distance is a good putt. So anything inside seven feet here would be great. And even though I thought I left this short, it ended up being fantastic. Two feet for par, I would sign up for that every time on this second hole, as it can be a difficult par four, the way that the lake breaks up this hole. I mark this and take my time. I don't just walk up there and tap it. These short putts can be nerve wracking and you wanna make sure you make them. That's an easy par. And we're on to the third. The third hole is a medium length par three. And in this case, the pin is tucked way left. So I have to make sure that I don't miss left as that short sided and a tough up and in from some rough off of a slope. Normally I'd hit an eight iron here, but you can see eight iron brings the lake into play and fails to cover that bunker. So the AI caddy is suggesting seven iron and I'll agree with it. Seven iron means I should carry that bunker for most shots. And while it may go past the pin, I'm hitting to the bigger area of green. So by taking extra club and aiming right, I've eliminated the short sided miss left and I've made sure I cover the bunker so that I'm putting. After a solid iron, I've got just 33 feet for birdie. And while that doesn't sound all that close, that's the equivalent to the average on the PGA Tour. That was a PGA Tour quality iron. On these putts, I'm not overly worried about making it. I'm just trying to get the pace and the read right, and if it goes in, it's a bonus. I'm not one that feels like I have to get it to the hole, because if I hit this too hard, I can leave quite a bit of work coming back, which is exactly what happens here. Even trying to get the speed right, I ran this five feet by, and now I've got a tester for par. If you want to play good golf, you have to be solid inside seven feet. And I make this one right in the center. If you're going to practice putting, I'd spend a lot of time in that range with both read and start line. The fourth hole is a short par four, but you've got houses and trees to the left that are death. It's an automatic pitch out and you've got out of bounds to the right as well. So it ends up being a narrow hole, which is why the AI caddy suggested a six iron, which would still just leave me a wedge. Now this hole fits my eye and I've played it a bunch, so I'm comfortable hitting a longer club like a driver and trying to cover the bunker on the right hand side. That being said, I do block this and end up in a tougher position than I would have been had I just hit the six iron. I got relief from the cart path, but 
Now I've got a bit of a sketchy lie to that front pin. Lucky for me, short of this green is just fine. It's a collection area. It's not too bad of an up and in. And all I have to do is keep this out of the bunkers and I at least have a shot. But with the tough lie, I blade that one a bit. In fact, I knock it all the way over the green. So while it's not in major trouble, I would have had an easier time from the fairway. And now I've got a tough little up and in. I hit a pretty good pitch here, but misread the slope and that hangs out there leaving me seven feet for par. So I'm grinding a little bit because I made a poor decision off the tee. I tried to take off more than I needed to. This is a big breaking putt to the right. And on these putts, you just gotta marry pace and read correctly. And I don't hit this hard enough, which means it never gets high enough and my line did not match my speed. So that's a two putt bogey and a dropped shot that I would blame on a poor tee decision. We'll go ahead and mark that in the tangent app so that I can learn from it later. The fifth hole is a short part five, down the hill then up the hill, but it's pretty narrow, which is why the tangent app is recommending just a three wood. Again, you've got out of bounds to the left and you've got a hazard with a lot of trees to the right. Now, just outside the fairway on the right is sparse trees. So I like to aim down that tree line and if it draws, it draws. If it doesn't, worst case, I'm pitching out. I just gotta avoid blocking it and I hit a really solid one here. It draws just like I saw in my mind's eye to the left side of the fairway, leaving me just about 200 yards to the hole. Now the tangent caddy is recommending that I lay up with a seven iron because it's a relatively elementary up and down from front and short of the green. If you take it on with a five iron, you bring both bunkers into play and that green is not very big. In this case, I took the more aggressive club and the five iron, but I took a conservative target. I aimed at the pin on the left-hand side, knowing that if I miss this left, it's an easy up and in from just off the green. But I hit a grade five iron. I end up catching the green and it will have just 15 feet Thank for you. eagle. So the additional risk there paid off. Again, on these eagle putts, I'm not really doing anything different. I'm not trying to hit it too hard or make sure I get it there or any of that. I'm treating it like any other 15 footer. Your chances of making these aren't that great. You're gonna make them less than 30% of the time and you'll make them even less if you hit them harder than normal, which would change the read. So I put a pretty good stroke on that, gave it a chance to go in, but assured the easy birdie and just like that, I am one under par again. That takes us to the sixth hole, which is another medium length par three. The pin here was on the far right hand side. The trouble as you can see is we got a big lake. Not only do we have a big lake, but it falls off left into the water as well. So it's very important that you get this past the pin, which is why the AI caddy is suggesting an additional club. I could normally get nine iron there, but we're gonna hit an eight iron. Eight iron makes sure I get past the pin and past the water, which is a good thing, because on the left side of the green, if I would have been 10 yards short, that ball would have bounced down into the water. As it is, I've got 36 feet for birdie. I highly suggest you pace off your putts like I just did. So you start to get a feel for how long putts are and how close you hit it. That was another more or less PGA Tour level shot to get to here. And after a really good lag, I've assured an easy par on a difficult par three. Threes are always good on your scorecard. The seventh hole, again, the AI caddy is suggesting three wood. And again, that's because there's out of bounds left and a lake to the right where it falls off to that slope. And normally I would go with the AI caddy, but this is another shot that just fits my eye. I like driver. I'm confident here. I've hit driver a ton and mostly stayed out of trouble. I just have a lot of confidence on this shot. That being said, I still favor the right hand side with those sparse trees and try to hit it that way. In this case, I blocked that and actually got really lucky. I brought the lake into play, but my ball hit the cart path and bounced onto the tee box of the next hole, going over 300 yards. So I kind of lucked out for a bad shot. I probably should have had a penalty there. That leaves just a 90 yard shot to a pin. And from this angle, there's not a lot of trouble. As long as I don't pull it into that bunker, I'm in good shape. Just try to get the number right. I had a pretty good 56 degree and got rewarded with just under 15 feet for birdie. Again, I don't do anything different for a birdie putt. I'm trying to get it there. I'm trying to make it, but if it's short, it's short. Don't get careless. And that was a good look, but unfortunately it's just a par. I'm one under par and I really haven't done anything spectacular. I've taken advantage of the par fives and just played solid golf. 
The eighth hole is a longer par four. And again, you've got out of bounds left and trees on the right. Pretty common theme on this golf course. But I know from playing it before that the trees on the right are pretty sparse. So I can take on the additional risk with the driver and aim down the right hand side. And it'll be very rare that I'd be blocked out by a tree if I leave it to the right, which is why I'm okay with the riskier play of driver. And sure enough, I do leave it out there on the right. That's becoming a theme in this round of golf. Lots of tee shots to the right, but it's okay. I'm in the trees, but not close enough to be in any real trouble. You can see that these trees are all pretty small. And I've got a little tricky downhill lie to a back right pin. So the AI caddy is telling me it hit 52, which is a good club for me. But off the downslope, you gotta know this one's gonna jump a little bit, and this one goes further than expected. So 52 is actually my 110 club, and it just went 126 yards over this green. But just on the apron, I'm in a good spot. Anytime you can get a putter in your hand, I highly recommend it. So even though I'm on the apron, I'm hitting a putter. Unfortunately, with this being a really grainy putt, I don't hit a very good putt. I leave that well short, and now I'll be scrambling from about four feet for par. Again, these are putts you just want to be good at. You want to get confident in them. You want to practice them the most when you do practice putting because it makes your lagging easier. It makes everything easier if you can make putts inside six feet pretty reliably. I take my time and clean the mud off of this ball. You also want to make sure that you're putting with clean golf balls. There's a lot of studies that show even a small amount of dirt or mud can impact the roll. So now I've got a clean golf ball, four feet, line it up and just try to match the pace with the read that I have and knock that one in. That's a good par on one of the tougher holes on this side. The ninth hole is a good little par four, but this is one of the tighter ones. Now we have OB left in the houses and we have OB on the right with the driving range. There's a little bunker out there that looks like it's in play. It's intimidating off the tee, but it's only a 220 carry, so it's not in play for my driver. I can use that as a line, and you can see with the distance dispersion arc in the tangent app that I have just enough room to safely hit driver. So I'm aiming at the pin and blasting away with driver. I hit one of my best drives on the side, easily cover the bunker, and we've got to look from the fairway with just a half wedge to this pin. The pin is tucked left and the big mistake would be pulling it into that bunker or pulling it off of the green. So I'm going to aim a little bit long and right at this pin. Just because it's 65 yards doesn't mean you go right at it all the time. I'm still going to take a little caution and aim a little bit away from the pin to give me more forgiveness for a shot. That may mean that I've got 15 feet, but I'll take 15 feet for birdie. When you got other people playing the hole, like in this case, make sure you learn from them as well. The My playing partner was on the same line. I watched what his ball did, and I've got a pretty good idea of what this putt does. Just outside the right-hand side. And that breaks right into the hole, and my conservative play paid off. I birdie the last hole to shoot two under on the front nine at Sherrill Park. And take note, even though I shot two under on that side, I really didn't do anything crazy. I had 16 putts, I only hit four fairways, I hit seven greens, basically just plodding along, picking good targets, and then hitting shots of those targets. I made a couple of big mistakes. You can make mistakes and still play good golf with better targets. Use the Tangent app, hit like and subscribe, and let's build this thing.